monthly Smarvin Art. Did you guys miss this view or what? I'm back at the lake because I'm homeschooling now for a little bit and everything's in Canada or I should say in Ontario is kind of closed. So we came up for a little bit of relaxation so I don't go too crazy while I'm homeschooling, which is like, you know, a little crazy, but it's fine. Happy to do it. Um, however, more importantly, we are going to talk about interference pigments today because I've seen so many questions um, from people not understanding what they are, and I use them in almost every pore. Um, I use the TLP interference colors, this little piggy. So the thing we, the thing you need to know about interference is in the powder form or even if you get uh, a tube interference they look white so uh, you can't really tell what's going to happen until you pour the reason they look white is because most interference paints are coated with titanium and the reason they're called interference is because they interfere with the light that hits them so in certain angles over a white color you don't see anything and then if you tilt it in the light then you see whatever color is underneath so there's so many different kinds of interferences uh tlp has like straight interference color like green uh velvet which is blue which is one of my faves and they also have duo interferences um that shift from two different colors for instance this is macaw and it shifts from a beautiful blue to a gold depending on what light um, and actually sometimes there's like three colors in here because sometimes you see green because when you mix kind of the blue and the gold, it turns green. So macaw is super magical. So I wanted to just show you how I mix them up. Um, there's gonna be a lot of experiments. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what just the plain interference looks like on a white base and on a black base. So you can compare because when interferences are put on a darker color, uh, you could see whatever color they represent more. And then I'll do two test tiles, one with an interference over a dark color and then one over a light color. And you'll tell me which one you guys like better. Um, and that's it. So I hope you enjoy. Let's get to mixing. Say bye to the lake. <laughs> bye. Okay, so let's mix up our piggies. What I use is Bare 8300 Deep Base. Um, I like this the best because it dries clear and it keeps them super sparkly. Now, many different people mix up different ways. What I like to do because I mix up a lot at once is I take a big cup like this. This is 32 ounces, but it doesn't really matter. And I just plop in my bear and I thin it with my Josonia just so it's manageable. I'm going to be adding more Josonia gloss in the cups to disperse the pigments, but it's, you'll see it's very gloopy and hard. See, gloop, gloop, gloop. So it's very thick. So I know everyone loves measurements. I'm going to do more. I'm not big into measurements because every paint that you use is different. So you want to start to learn how to eyeball what you're doing. Now, into this cup, I'm not making it perfect. I'm just thinning it out so I can pour them nicely in the cup. So hold on, just so you know, I put about 20 ounces in here. Again, it, it's different every day. And I'm just gonna go like this, a good, let's see, what was that? Just so you can, let's make it 26. So now I put six ounces of Josonia in my 20 and I'm still gonna have to play with it. It would be good if I had a mixing stick. Okay, I'll use this one. Um, but, Let's just see, so you, you can kind of see what um, consistency we're looking at before I even add my stuff. Now remember, because you're adding this to the dispersed pigments, you want this to look thicker than what you want your final product to be because the Josonia in the cup is going to thin it. But basically, so obviously, if you could see, this is too thick, this is not what I want my pouring medium, but I think it's gonna work well when I add it to my already dispersed pigments. 
okay? So this is just gonna make it easier for me to work with. Perfect. Put that aside for a minute. Put this aside. So I have my five piggies here. It's gonna be hard to see which one is which until we pour it, or if you put some on black, you'll be able to see it. Now I open it. You should be using a mask. I open it far from my face. And why don't I put the Joe Saga in first, Lisa? So in my four ounce cups, I do a squirt, squirt, squirt. So maybe like an ounce, squirt, squirt, squirt. Because this is what's going to disperse the pigments. Now, again, you're gonna say how much? I probably put this much, maybe a little more. And again, it doesn't really matter because you just want enough. You don't have to put as much interference in. Um, you just want the color to stay true. So if you find that you did it after you mix it up with your pouring medium, if you find that you didn't put enough in, in a separate cup, do this again and then add this part to your already mixed up paint. You don't want to add your pigment straight to your mixed up um, cup because it won't disperse properly. So that's what I'm going to do with all five of them. Once I do this, I take my pouring medium, I pour it in, and this is where we start to eyeball to see what thickness I want. And at this point, if I want, if it's too thin for whatever reason, I just add more bare straight to this cup. And if it's too thick, I add more Josonia. This is actually pretty good for me personally. Um, you can see one, two, three, it stays up for about three seconds. And it looks white, but on the black, you can see that there's a blue tinge to it. I hope you can see that. Anyways, so I'm gonna mix up the rest and I'll meet you back to test them out. Okay, so I have my 12 inch board here. This spinning situation obviously isn't what I'm used to doing, but I'm trying to stay clean here. So I just got a big Amazon box, put a garbage bag inside, got my cake spinner, covered it with Oil. You could use saran wrap. You could use hair caps from the dollar store. Um, and she spins. So what I normally do is I put, normally this is taped. I'm not going to like sell this one or anything. Normally it's taped. I put a bit of paint on the bottom. So it sticks. Usually that works. So we'll see. Okay. So what I'm going to do for this experiment is I'm gonna put half white pillow paint and half black pillow paint, and I'm gonna use white cell activator on one side and Payne's gray on the other so we could really see the difference. Let's talk about pillow paints for a minute. For me, I like Glidden Essentials Eggshell. However, um, it's quite thin, so I do decant them in smaller these things and I let them sit open for a day or two in the smaller thing. If you keep it in your in the can, you can leave it open for three days. Um, now, black pillow paint. I used to use um, Sherwin-Williams Color To Go. It's not gonna be a perfect line, by the way. Sherwin-Williams Color To Go, but they don't make them anymore. So I've been playing around with the Benjamin Moore so it's okay i like it better than the glidens or anything else but it is thin so i also do leave i left this open for a day first swipes it's okay if it's a little thinner for blooming you definitely need this thickened up um next problem is these two pillow paints are different viscosity so it's not going to spin evenly it's not going to tilt evenly but we don't really care because we're just doing this um, as an experiment anyways, but just things for you to note. I'm just gonna put the black kind of on top like that and like this. You can see it's thinner already. 
try to get rid of that little bit of white. You know, we're not perfect here. And that is okay with us, right? Okay, so I've kind of got a half and half thing going on. And next, swiping tool. What I'm gonna use today, I just actually got this because I have to order all my stuff from Amazon here because I don't have anything here. So it's a regular cake uh, froster, whatever you wanna call it. When you're swiping, I should do a whole swiping video. I'm gonna put my cell activator on the back. Now I'm not, because this is this thickness, I'm not gonna just plop it on and swipe it. I actually leave it at a bit of an angle when I swipe. So it brings the paint over, hopefully you'll see. All right, let's get to doing this already. Okay, so I have five colors. Uh, I'm gonna start with the middle color so I can kind of gauge where I'm going. So the middle color here is Twinkle and I'm gonna put it across. Hmm, let me get this more in the middle. I'm going to put it across like this okay so we've got twinkle now on top of twinkle is going sequins now because i'm putting my cell activator right on top of a pigment the cells aren't going to be crisp that's okay because again this is just for color so i wouldn't necessarily always suggest swiping over a pigment if you care about crisp cells and lacing because the cell activator kind of bleeds into the pigment because the pigment can't hold it up because it's just pigments. This is macaw, which we love. And you'll notice you can't really tell the difference as I'm pouring it, but when I swipe it and I'm gonna do a close up in the light, you will see the difference. And this last one is Pinot Gris, which is green. So some of these are duos and some of these are not. And you'll see when I swipe. Okay, moment of truth. So remember, on this side, I'm gonna go white. I'm gonna get my paper towel ready. And on this side, we're going Payne's Gray. Oh, I, oh for, look what I already did and I didn't even start yet. Hold on. You have to make sure your tool is very clean and it has no paint on it because you don't want to swipe any paint on it. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour the white on here, and then I take my little popsicle stick, and I kind of smooth, I know you can't really see, I don't wanna get it, but I kind of smooth it out, and I wipe the excess off, so it kind looks like a frosted cake. Okay, you ready? Wish me luck. Now you're not gonna see much until I show you in the light. Okay, now I'm just gonna wipe this off. All right, oop, making a mess up. What the, why is this so wet? I'm really trying hard not to make a mess, guys, and holy cannoli, it's hard work. Okay, clean. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the Payne's Gray. And wipe her off. Okay, and here we go. Oh, look at those little air bubbles. All right. So, normally I would keep swiping, but I don't want to do that. So, I'm just going to make little. Um, I'm going to take my skewer, just make it pretend that it's going to look pretty, and then I'll bring you over to the light so you could see. So I'm just gonna like do little ziggy zaggies, you know? Or something. I'm not expecting a masterpiece, but 
we want it to look somewhat pretty. Okay, and then like, if I wanted, I could, because we want every part to look like I did it on purpose, even if I did it. So, like this is quite boring here. Let's pretend, ooh, like we're doing swirls. And then here is quite boring, All right? And then why don't we do the other side and then I'll spin. Okay, we're almost done. Uh, doesn't matter. Okay, so we just want to see the difference on the white and the dark. The dark already, you could see more of the colors popping out. The white, you definitely need to see in a different light. And I just kind of keep going back and forth, checking the composition as I spin. And you want to keep spinning until the paint is no longer moving. My little Amazon box is doing quite well. All right. So there you have it. Uh, is it like gorgeous? No, but already you can see the colors and I'm gonna take you over to the light so you can see how the interference reflects on the white. Be right back. Okay, so I have my pillow paint down. I'm using Glidden Essentials eggshell. I leave it open for a few days to thicken. However, it is still a little thin because my paints aren't used to being in this new environment. So let's hope it goes well. So I'm thinking I'm gonna use two interference colors today. Uh, I'm gonna start off with this custom light purple that I made. I make a lot of my colors myself just by mixing um, paints together to get what I'm looking for. So that's a custom color. Now this is a TLP Twinkle, which is a beautiful uh, violety color, which we love. I'm gonna put it right on top. And again, you're not gonna be able to tell until the layering begins. Now, on top of that, I'm gonna do the dark one first. So. I'm going, this is um, English Lisa Marvin. This is Golden Payne's Gray. It's a very deep navy. Amsterdam's Payne's Gray, which I usually use for my cell activator, is more gray. This is blue, which we like. On top of that, I'm gonna do that macaw because I wanna see that kind of uh, really cool color shift. Okay. And then, what am I doing on top of that? I'm just gonna put my um, golden phthalo turquoise and I'm gonna use my white Shelly Art Cell Activator today. <clears throat> uh, that's Australian Floetrol and Titanium White. I don't measure, but I mix it about three to one. All right, and then when I blow this out, I'll bring it over to the light so you can see the sparkle. All right, let's see. All right, let's let it sit for a minute. Now my lighting here isn't great, so I hope that I can get the sparkle. I'm just letting it sit to let the cell activator kind of come down a bit, and then we'll spin it out. Let's see, can I see anything yet? Not in this light, but we're gonna bring it over in a moment. <clears throat> and she's ready to spin.
I hardly do any pores without using an interference color. I just find that they add so much depth and sparkle and kind of like a 3D vibe. All right, so this is looking good. So let's bring you over to the light to see what we've done. Okay, we're gonna do the exact same thing, except for instead of putting um, the panes gray, I'll do a light blue. All right, so, uh, my custom perps. And then we will do Twinkle. By the way, Twinkle is another one of my faves. I've. I know I keep saying everything's my fave, but it kind of is, so it is hard to choose. Okay, so now I'm gonna put Amsterdam Sky Blue instead of the Payne's Gray. And then I will do the Macaw. And then I will do, ooh, we're really sliding today. Um, then, I will do, whoops, <laughs> you can see my setup's totally different. I have this like Amazon box, it's holding up pretty well. It's kind of my makeshift studio. Okay, so, although we can tell we're not flat anymore, but that is okay for now. Okay, so let's get to blowing. blowing video by the way called there she blows to for some tips because blowing can be really hard um i don't remember which video number just scroll down it's called there she blows okay give her one more second here and i'm curious to see what she does under the light. And I'm curious to see which one you'll like better. You guys will have to let me know. There's no wrong way to do it. It all works, it all looks pretty. It just kind of depends on the look you're going for. All right. One more little spinny and then we will go to the lights. I wanna thank you guys so much for joining. I hope this helped. Let me know which one you like better and tell me how you feel about the interference. Have a good day.